Jamel Charlo is definitely on Terrence Crawford's radar, but now Jamel believes that Terrence cheated in his fight with Errol Spence. While quite a few people believe that there is a conspiracy in the results of the fight, other pros believe that Spence was outdone fair and square. Bob Arum stated, Look at Spence's body of work, and what clue do you see there which would lead Crawford to victory? And the clue that I saw was that out of his fights, I think he had 28 fights. Of all those fights, he only fought two southpaws. So what is that telling you? It's telling you that he has trouble with southpaws because to only have two out of 28 fights, it means that his people or himself have looked to avoid southpaws. Now Terence's big strength is that he fights equally well from either side. Sean Porter has spoken about how Spence was lacking fight IQ back when they fought, but he thought that Spence would have been smarter by now when it comes to fight logic. When I fought Spence, mm -hmm. I felt like from a um, from the standpoint of what do guys always say, um, the cerebral side of, of the boxing game, mm -hmm. I felt like I was a step ahead of him. Right. The IQ. And the IQ, yeah. And I always felt, I felt like I was a step ahead of him in that fight. I think it, I, in my mind, I clearly was a step ahead of him in that fight. But then you fast forward. So I always thought that that was the big separation between him and Terrence. Mm -hmm. Until I started to assess the fact that he's been in the ring with me. It's been now three years or two years since we fought. Almost three years. Uh, yeah, three years since we fought. Um, I think he's smarter now. And I'm like, if if he's indeed smarter than he was when we fought, he's just as good, if not better, than when we fought. Mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford swears that the key to his victory was a simple one, and he stated, a fight is won in training. Given the fact that we expected Errol to come out the way he did, we knew what he was going to do and when he was going to do it. Errol fights the same way each and every time he steps foot in the ring. All we had to do was take away his jab, take away the jab, and he becomes basic. And that's what we did on fight night. Floyd Mayweather definitely doesn't think that Spence has any business cutting that much weight, though. Floyd stated, I don't think he should be fighting at 154. I think he should be fighting at 160 or 168. That's just my honest opinion, you know, but once again, I don't have any say-so. Derek James couldn't give any excuses for why Spence lost to Crawford, though. James stated, That's life, man. You can prepare for something and it doesn't work out. You can be off. Your timing can be off and your reactions can be off. It was like Spence was walking in quicksand. This can be down to the weight. Whatever it was, it wasn't the arrow that we've become accustomed to seeing or the same guy that's been in the gym. Who knows what it was? I have no idea and I make no excuses for his performance. But that was not the Errol Spence that we all know and love. It was more about Errol than it was about Crawford, I believe. It happens sometimes in boxing, unfortunately. Derek James was caught checking Terrence's gloves after the fight, though. Spence didn't come up with any excuses for his loss either, as he said that the better man won and that was it. Are you willing to do this rematch back at welterweight? Um, it's <clears throat> something I got to talk to my management about, but um, hopefully it's at uh, 154. How was this particular weight cut? Was it a very difficult one or did you feel at ease with the weight cut? I mean, it's always difficult, but um, you know, like I said, I don't make any excuses. The better man won tonight. Roy Jones Jr. thinks that Spence should just be happy to be alive, and he doesn't think that Spence should listen to everyone who's criticizing his loss. Roy stated, Forget what people say. You made a lot of money, and you did something that a lot of people will never do. You became a unified world champion, even after falling out of a car and 100 miles an hour. You're lucky to even be alive. You were one half of a super fight. If you can do it again, cool. If you can't, what do you have to worry about? You got paid, brother. Go and enjoy your life if your body can't hold up. Roy Jones Jr. also doesn't think that fighting at a bigger weight would really change things too much for him. Roy stated, they should sign the rematch clause, but ask to have one or two fights in between to get Spence right for the rematch. If they get the chance to work on the other tools in the toolbox, it gives them a much better chance to give a better fight. The weight is not what will make it look different. 
If he just goes in and fights Bud the way he is now, he could fight him at 154 or 160 and it wouldn't make a difference. Eddie Hearn thinks that Terrence hasn't received enough credit for his win over Spence, and he thinks that the excuses are taking away the glory for him. Eddie stated, I said before I thought he'd win the fight by stoppage. He's just an incredible talent. I don't like it when people start saying Errol Spence looked old, he struggles with weight, the car crash affected him, the eye retina tear affected him. The reality is, and I said it in the build up to that fight, those things will take their toll on you. I just don't like the way that sometimes Crawford doesn't get credit because people are looking for excuses. I figure 154. I think it might be a better weight for Errol Spence, but it won't be a different result. Stephen A. Smith hopes that they wait at least a year before doing the rematch, and he even mentions that Spence was simply outclassed. A matter of fact, let me make a plea over the international digital airwaves of YouTube. Let me make a plea right now to Terrence Crawford. I understand you just beat him. You beat him thoroughly. You're the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. The WBO, the WBA, the WBC, the IBF titles. But you hugged him after the fight for a reason. I am making a plea to Terrence Crawford. Even if you elect to give Errol Spence Jr. a rematch. Please do not do this for at least a year. Don't, please don't do that. Naturally, some fans and pros believe that there was cheating going on during the fight. And quite a few people believe that the judges chosen for the fight were ones known for giving bad decision calls. After the referee and judges' names were posted on Twitter, many fans took to their comments to point out the issue with the list. One fan tweeted, The usual suspects. This is a robbery waiting to happen. Another fan posted, Whenever I see Tim Cheatham or Steve Weisfeld, there's almost always controversy. Hoping we don't need them in this fight. Another fan stated, Hell no, nah, man. These are the refs from the Combosis fight. Canelo Alvarez believes that Terrence won fair and square, though, and he stated, Crawford was the best man that night, and if they fight again, it's gonna be the same thing. He's a better fighter. I respect Spence, and I like Spence, but Crawford has everything. Jermel Charlo definitely thought that Terrence was throwing some illegal shots, though. Jermel stated, Errol had a bad night. It was nothing that made me be like, oh, Crawford, something spectacular. He didn't throw that many punches. I don't know why none of you were talking about some of these behind-the-head shots and that you didn't mention. I saw a bunch of behind-the-head shots during that fight. Terrence didn't seem too bothered by Jermel's comments, and he posted a picture to his Instagram hinting at a possible fight. As he stated, caught the big fish, now I'm hunting the little cub. Jermel then commented back and stated, ha ha ha, very entertaining. You know it's a big thing here, let's get it. Jermel has clearly accepted Crawford's call out, and with Canelo turning down Terrence's call out, it looks like Crawford will have plenty of time to prepare. Canelo stated, He's a great fighter. He deserves to be in the top two, but it's hard for me to make other weights. Like he said, if he beat Gervonta Davis, nobody is going to appreciate that. They're going to say, too small, too small. And I think it's the same position for me. But Canelo did not rule out moving up once more. He has already won world honors at light heavyweight, and the 33-year-old even suggested 175 pounds might not be his ceiling. We never know. I like challenges. We never know. Canelo seems more focused on his upcoming fight with Dremel anyways, and after that fight, Dremel can worry about any other potential fights. Canelo stated, It's a good fight. It's been talked about since a long time ago, and now I'm in premier boxing championships. I think it's a good fight for the fans. I just like fighting. I like boxing, and I like what I'm doing right now, making history. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.